many thanks for joining us again today. Um, looking at recent trading in 2020, the industry proved um, very resilient to disruption from the pandemic. Can you just explain what the key reasons for this were and whether you see that continuing? I think the primary reason is that companies such as IQE operate with what I would call a very low people intensity. So actually, we found it relatively easy to implement the kind of social distancing measures required to run manufacturing operations during this time. We were very much on the front foot on this in February last year, implementing the policies and measures necessary. Um, and that's meant that we've been able to keep our operations open throughout all of the lockdowns in every region of the world in, in which we operate. I think also, though, demand has been important, you know, and at this time, connectivity in particular um, is ever more important. Um, and therefore, the whole technology industry and, and our industry as part of that has really proved very resilient in terms of demand, which has, you know, kept uh, um, the, the demand for our factories very buoyant all through 2020. Great, thanks. And looking forward, though, obviously, the economic outlook is is very uncertain. Um, how might a, a global recession impact your markets? So clearly, a, a recession may have an adverse effect on the handset market in particular as a, as a big consumer market. But we really think that 5G penetration within that market will continue to expand. And certainly the, the initial projections from data analysts um, in, so far this year would suggest that will be the case. I think also from an infrastructure point of view, which is an important market for us too, um, that governments will really use 5G deployments as a stimulus to really get their economies going in a post-COVID world and wouldn't see that those would be particularly affected by a global recession. So looking at the handset market in, in a bit more depth, um, what's your view in terms of how that market progresses over the course of 2021? The increasing volumes of 5G handsets is really exciting. And it's not just about speed of connectivity. It's really about the expanding use cases for the phone. Take, for example, augmented reality. We really see this as being a big demand driver for the adoption of more 3D sensing solutions um, probably back end of 2021 and certainly beyond that. Great. And then looking towards infrastructure, that was a, a big driver for growth in 2020. Uh, what does the outlook for deployments look like there? So Asia really took the lead in 5G deployments in 2020. We estimate that over 90% of uh, base station deployments uh, were in China, for example. And here are Ganon silicon carbide, which is the material that is within the antenna element of the, uh, the base stations and small cells, um, is a really key technology underpinning these, uh, these 5G deployments. Um, and we certainly see that um, you know, this will be a multi-year replacement cycle. Um, so many years of growth are possible. There are certain factors which mean it might go faster or slower, um, such as geographical points, um, potentially geopolitical points, and, and certainly technical points as well. But overall, over the coming years, we see this as a really important growth market for IQE. So you, so you discussed the sensing market within handsets. Um, looking beyond handsets, can you, can you discuss the sensing market in other applications and how that might evolve over the course of the next few years? I'm really excited about the possibilities for 3D sensing. I can certainly envisage a world where 3D sensing is everywhere, in wearables, in your home, in your workplace. Um, used for real-time device management, for data, for security. Um, this is the world of connected devices, the much heralded Internet of Things. So I think over the next five years, we're going to really see an expansion of the types of devices that are using 3D sensing technologies. Um, and that will include things as diverse as healthcare sensing through to autonomous vehicles. Exciting times. And, and looking at the projected growth in your markets, um, how do you tally, tally that with your investment plans? Can you talk about those for the, the coming year and beyond? We completed the infrastructure expansion, as we call it, in 2018-19, which gives us a lot more space in our facility to deploy tools. Going forward, our capex will be much more linear to the revenue opportunity. So greater opportunity equals more reactors, more tools within those facilities. Now we exit 2020 in a really strong balance sheet position, 
Um, we're in a net cash position as we exit the year. And that means that in 2021, we're likely to invest more related to our increasing confidence in that expanding opportunity. Good stuff. Uh, great to see the, the, the plan to coming together and, uh, and everything taking shape. Tim, thanks very much. Thank you.